ever stop me from dusting off my shoes You might think you'll see me falling to the ground But I threw up my umbrella when rain stops sitting down So I just wanted to make a quick tip. If you're trying to pull exhaust bolts off and they're really, really crusty, rusty like these. Now this is a 2011 BMW, but most of your exhaust systems are gonna look just like this. This is the method that I've used to get things like this loose. Um, now, even if you get these loose and they're rusty like this, you still need to replace the hardware, but if you'll use this method, you'll save yourself a lot of time and potentially damage from trying to get a torch or cutting, in, cutting into the exhaust. Um, I just use a map gas torch. Heat it up. Now I've already been working on this one. So you're trying to direct all the heat into that nut. Then take you whatever kind of penetrating lube that you use. I like this knocker loose. Ba Bam. Then, when you go to take it off, once it breaks loose, just loosen it a little bit. Spray the threads back down. Now hand me that knocker loose. Spray down the threads again. Then tighten the bolt or the nut. Spray it down. And I keep doing that process over and over. And there you go. So I'd already started working on that one. I haven't touched this one at all. The only thing I've done to this one was spray down with some uh, penetrating lube, that knocker loose, and let it sit. I'm gonna just uh, stop talking and show you guys the process from start to finish. And you can tell this nut is all round, rounded off. So you would think it's just a, a lost cause, but, and it is once you get it off, but we can go ahead and get it off without any kind of like cutting or anything. Well, there you go, guys. That's the way I get off rusty nuts and rusty bolts. Heat them up with a torch, get them as hot as you can, and spray them down with knocker loose. If you have an oxycetylene torch, you, it works much better because you can get those cherry red and then put your ratchet on there. But just try to loosen it up. If you can't loosen it, then tighten it. And if you can't tighten it, just work back and forth and do it by hand. And once you start loosening, if it stops, spray everything down with some more penetrating lube. Go the reverse direction, tighten it. Spray it down again and then work it down, work it off. Also use a wire brush to help clean up the threads as you go and most times you won't snap those off. Hope you liked the tip.
So I'm back on the BMW project after spending a week in Con Expo. I need to drain, I need to drop the fuel tank now. I pulled the actual, this is the filler neck. It's a really, really neat setup. I've never seen a fuel tank with this setup, so I like the way the BMW did it. It allows you to drain the fuel tank really, relatively easy, but the problem is there's still some fuel down in here because this isn't the lowest point. So I'm gonna use my little cap kit that I bought from the Caterpillar. See if I happen to have a cap the appropriate size to where I can plug the hole like that and hopefully not spill any more fuel out of it. Um, the only problem is the cap that I just put in there doesn't fit really tightly. Um, but it's probably tight enough just to get it out. But man, this cap kit has uh, saved my life. And there's some other manufacturers that make these. I need to find out. If you guys know anybody else that makes cap kits like this, these are the slip-in kits or caps like that that just kind of push on. I really want the threaded ones, but I want an entire set. So if any of y'all know where I can get a whole set just like this and it comes with the, um, uh, the like they're, little, they're usually red for some reason. I don't know what manufacturer makes them all, um, decided to make them all red, but there'll be like a little plastic JIC, there'll be plastic ones for flat face, there'll be plastic one for NBT, NPT, and then these. Um, leave it down in the comments and let me know. Well, I got the fuel tank out with the help of Riley over there, and it's a pretty simple job. I read on some Beamer forums that this job is supposed to take 12 and a half hours. I think that was sorely misrepresented. It's not that big of a problem, but um, it is a little time consuming, but it's probably one of the easier tanks I've taken out. All I had to do was take out the dry, all I had to do was any different than a normal fuel tank was take out the drive shaft. Normally you don't have to do that when you remove the tank and all of the plastic and the metal um covers and heat shields underneath it and the exhaust so it's a little more involved but labor time you're probably looking three or four hours if you're really hustling so i'm going to grab the new to this car used fuel tank and stick it back in i've already transferred the top of the tank and everything and once i get it in the car and get it running and i make sure that everything is good i'm probably going to cut the top of that tank that i pulled out of this car apart and show you guys what's inside it, but it's probably gonna be for different videos. So we'll get it mounted back up in here and reverse of uh, disassembly, you just put it back together. But nothing ever stopped me from dusting off my shoes. You might think you'll see me falling to the ground. Well, I got the fuel tank in the car and I just have it kind of mounted really, really quickly because I want to test to make sure this thing's gonna run. I would hate to put the fuel tank in there, button it all back together, go into start, and the new fuel tank has a leak or something doesn't work right. And if you guys remember, this tank on these cars is crazy. It's got one fuel pump, two jet siphon pumps in it, which is just a Venturi style pump, two send-in units, about eight to ten feet of tubing one permanently installed fuel filter and two fuel pressure regulators all going on inside that tank so i want to make dang sure this thing is going to work before i ever bolt up the rest of it either that or i'm going to waste about two hours of labor so let's see if she'll start sounds mean with no exhaust and no catalytic converter baby i think you just got an upgrade on your car every redneck in Stephenville is gonna be jealous <laughs> 